Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Hera. Hera is a mid lane mage that focuses on extreme burst damage and some of the hardest lockdown of any mage, at the cost of low mobility. Here are a few builds that work well on Hera. She typically builds the meta, but sometimes it's not a bad idea to splash in some defense like a mantle or a breastplate. In times when things like Book of the Dead and the latter defense items are good on mages, Hera typically shines, hence her less than stellar reputation among the community, since when she's meta, she's usually an unkillable mage with unreal burst and crowd control. Relics wise, when you're starting out, you're gonna wanna go with the good old beads and ages. This can change depending on the meta, but just to play it safe, stick with beads and ages. Speaking of playing safe, let's talk about Hera's first ability. Hera creates a small damaging cone in front of herself, then summons a large damaging rectangle AoE at a position of her choosing, which deals heavy damage once after a short windup, dealing bonus damage if both fists collide with the same enemy. Any minions caught in the initial AoE cone are flung into wherever the large rectangle AoE lies and the rectangle AoE fires in timing with their arrival into it. So, this ability is a little strange on paper, but it's very simple in practice. To clear waves, all you have to do is set the rectangle on the archers, and position yourself with the melee minions to catch them with the cone AoE, trapping the entire wave in one fell swoop. And to poke enemies, just try to place the rectangle AoE smack dab in the center of their character model. It fires quickly enough that most gods can't strafe out of it in time. To ensure they don't though, you can rely on your two. Hera winds up for a moment and fires an extremely long range medium sized projectile. This projectile goes through walls and minions, and upon colliding with an enemy god, transforms them into a random creature. While in this polymorphed state, targets are slowed by 30% and are completely silenced, making them unable to use basic attacks or cast abilities. This ability is an excellent poke tool, wave clear, or even combo starter when paired with your first ability. Its applications are very blatant. Use it as self-peel, use it to set up combos or get some poke off. Really, the hard part of this ability is landing it. Once you get used to it, it's not too difficult. But when you're first starting out, getting used to the extremely long windup, the deceptively large hitbox, and the sheer range of it is probably going to take you a bit. Things like this are hard to put into words. You really need to just jump into jungle practice and feel it out for yourself. But if I had any tip, just keep in mind that you can only flick this ability at the very last moment before it fires to change its trajectory. Inputting anything before this short window isn't necessary. Absolutely necessary, however, is Hera's third ability. Hera shields herself and grants herself move speed. <clears throat> and that's kinda it. There's really not too much to this ability. All you really need to keep in mind is that you can't cast it while CC'd, and given its crazy long duration, never hesitate to use it preemptively, right before a combo. Just don't do it too early because you absolutely need this ability to absorb some damage during a teamfight or trade. Speaking of teamfights, let's talk about Hera's ultimate. Hera casts Argus down to a target location, creating a large circle AoE which damages and knocks up anyone inside of it once Argus lands. So, as you can probably guess, this is your go-to combo starter if it's available. That's not all though. Once Argus lands, he becomes controllable and will target the nearest enemy, prioritizing gods, but can be placed on a target of your choosing by reactivating the ability and, well, targeting them. Then, reactivating the ability again, we'll call Argus off them. Once Argus is out and about, your 3 will now affect both Hera and Argus. Hera gains her usual shield and movement speed. However, for the same duration, Argus will also gain movement speed and an extremely high damaging damage over time AoE around him, turning an annoying deployable pet into an absolute menace for a short period of time. So it's not uncommon for a Hera to slap Argus down and immediately 3 to start applying the damage over time. Argus has a set duration, as well as a scaling health bar. You'll notice he's quite tanky early in mid game, while easily shredded through late game with an extremely long duration if he survives a fight. Although, it's not uncommon for Hera to want to let Argus rampage to get himself on cooldown, so that she can have the AoE knockup ready for the next fight. And about cooldowns, now's a good time to touch on Hera's passive. If Hera's ultimate is on cooldown, anytime Hera hits an enemy god with an ability or basic attack, the cooldown is reduced by one second. If Argus is currently active, he is instead healed for a scaling amount for every ability or basic attack hit on an enemy god. So, this is one of those passes that more or less just goes on in the background as you play, simply encouraging you to poke your enemies while out in teamfights, which, to be honest, even without the passive, is something Harris should be going for. For leveling order, you often want to start with your 1, then level your 2 at level 3, and your 3 at level 3. However, against more aggressive junglers with a passive jungler of your own, it isn't a terrible idea to grab your shield second rather than your second ability. As for leveling from here, you usually want to level up your one first, however some hero players, especially in losing matchups, prefer leveling the two in order to more safely clear waves, while still not losing out on too much damage. From there, you level your one or your two, depending on whichever one you haven't already leveled, and then level up your third ability last, and of course leveling your ultimate every time you can. Here's a few examples of combos with Hera.
So mechanically, Hera is not rocket science, although she is still considered in the upper echelon of difficulty, simply due to how unforgiving it can be if you're just a few pixels too far up for too long in a team fight. One piece of hard CC and Hera has to use her beads or she will die. All Hera is able to rely on is a bit of self-peel with her second ability and her ultimate plus her shield, and has no built-in CC immunity to speak of. That's not to say she can't get a lot of damage out before dying, but it really is best if she can get a big combo off and run down any stragglers with Argus and her decent sustained damage. With a lot of damage dealers in Smite, you worry about what abilities you can hit and who you can hit them on. With Hera, it's more so worrying about what abilities can hit you, and if you'll be able to survive long enough to get your insane damage onto somebody that matters, like another mage or a hunter. So, if you're having trouble learning how to space yourself in teamfights, there's no better mage than Hera, because she'll reward you heavily for positioning well, and punish you just as hard for stepping over the line. Just keep in mind that Hera's damage is alright early, then once your 1 and 2 are both close to or are completely maxed, Hera will start obliterating any squishy target, usually around mid-game. Then, she only gets better with luxury damage items and a max shield late game. That's all I have on Hera for now. Thanks for watching.